Hey, John here. I'm filming another video from my kitchen here in New Jersey, and I want to do another review of ButcherBox for you. If you've been following my station, you know I did my first review in February. It's now early June, and when I got this video, when I did that video in February, I only had ButcherBox for two months. Now that I've had it for a number of additional months, the weather's been nice, I've been cooking a lot of the food, I wanted to share a sort of refreshed view or version of my evaluation of the service of the product. So if anyone found this video because they're looking to see if they should go ahead and make the purchase, maybe and hopefully this video would help you out in your thinking process. So first, uh, I'd like to start out with the concept of butcher box. Butcher box is not a butcher. They're not a farmer raising animals. Think of them as a broker who connects customers to small and humane farmers to provide high quality meats in a somewhat cost effective way. I say cost effective because everyone's situation is going to be different from the size of the family you have, if you have a family, how much beef you get, what kind of meats you typically like. The factors can go on and on and I'll talk a little bit about that in my review. In terms of the service, it's actually very easy. They have a website. Step one, is to register and provide some basic information about yourself. Your name, your email address, your home address, uh, phone number, and the credit card where they can charge it. Very quick. Step two is select the kind of meats, the select the kind of meat box you want. Beef, pork, chicken, or a combo. After you select that, you select the size of the box you want. They offer a standard box which has around uh, 9 to 14 pounds of meat or a big box which is 18 to 26 pounds of meat. Now it's important to say when you look at the servings, okay, um, Butcher Box considers one serving to be 6 ounces when I think most of us do 8 ounces as a single serving and that's kind of important because when you factor in 6 ounces to the amount, the number of pounds you get of beef, Standard box comes out to approximately 144 servings of meat. Times four weeks, times five days a week, you can see whether or not that's enough for a family of five, a family of six, a couple of two, right? The situation could vary. Um, and then after you select the size of the box, oh, by the way, the prices. Standard box um, is $128 and the standard big box is 238. The term standard is very important. Standard box means if I selected beef, standard size, I can't choose the kinds of cut I want, like filet mignon versus New York strip versus ribeye. I just get whatever they offer me and they'll normally offer a variety every single month. Um, if I choose a custom box, standard size, that's $148 and the big custom box is 270 or 68, something like that. But the difference is I choose the, the types of meat I want in the box and so I know what's coming. So um, the last aspect of the registration, so you've signed up, you select the beef, you select the size, then you select how often you want it. They're very flexible here. By default, they'll send you it once a month um, you can change that at any time without penalty. I've actually done that in the winter time. I skipped a month. Now I have it going June, um, May and June. I'm skipping July because I have a vacation down by the shore, but I'll pick it up against in August. Do it at any time. They don't make it a hassle. It's very simple. After you set up the date, they're going to charge your credit card and within two to four days max, it shows up at your front door. My experience with the service so far has been very good, very reliable. Uh, the packaging has actually improved. Uh, when you'll see it's, it's um, a better package, things are better contained, the installation's excellent. I'll show you the box when I open it. Um, and um, yeah, so that's uh, some initial points. From my perspective, now the question is, is it worth it? Is the amount of money and the convenience of having meat show up at your front door worth it? I'm sorry about that. I had to take a cut because I had a visitor at the house and the dogs were going crazy. Um, the question of is it, if it's worth it, there isn't one answer that's going to suit everyone. 
let me explain how I view it and how I'm doing the math in my head and you can see if it resonates with you or not. So the first question is, for the kinds of meat you're buying, let's take chicken. And the money you're spending, nine to 14 pounds of chicken for $128, which will get you around 144 servings. The price is gonna be around 12 to 13 and a half dollars per pound of chicken. That's pretty high if you just look at chicken alone because also the fact that for chicken and pork, the question is, do you have access where you live to mainstream grocery stores that typically sell high quality chicken or pork, or better yet, do you have access to a butcher or are you close to farms that sell this kind of thing that normally would come at a smaller cost? My answer where I live is yes. I could generally find more cost-effective chicken and pork in my local grocery store, like a ShopRite, Whole Foods, etc., and it's a little better for me to get it there. The wild card is beef, though. Beef is not always easy to find high quality. Beef that's treated in a humane way, no antibiotics, no hormones, and most importantly, grass-fed and grass-finished. Many times you hear the buzzword grass-fed, and you think that's great. Most people don't realize, including myself, I, until recently, that grass-fed simply means the cow was raised initially on grass and then later converted to a different diet like grains, etc. Grass-fed and grass-finished means they were raised initially on grass, but their entire lifespan has been maintained on grass. And if the weather conditions weren't conducive to eating grass because it was raining, there's a storm, um, they would still feed them uh, hay products, for example, and not grain or corn, etc. So that's important because Butcher Box maintains sourcing beef from small local farms, depending on where you live, with meat that has been raised with, uh, humanely, without hormones, without antibiotics, and have gr been grass-fed and grass-finished. Those factors, all considered, is not always easy to find, right? Yes, I can go to a Whole Foods because I live close to one. Not everyone has access to a Whole Foods or they don't trust the local you know, a convenience store or a smaller chain um, grocery store because beef is very tricky. So my experience and my research has shown that butcher box, the butcher box, even the custom box, when you look just at uh, beef alone, is very cost effective. The convenience of it showing up at my front door and have it be grass fed, finished, no, no hormones, humanely raised, etc., is a great option. So with that said, I've always done a beef only box, a beef only custom box for $148. The price of that I find competitive. The convenience is excellent. The quality of the beef I found to be fantastic. I've never had a, a type of meat and that's varied between filet mignon, ranch steak, New York strip, ribeye, they've all been good. The quality I've never had a problem with. And on top of that, you always have, for every box you get shipped, you're always gonna get a um, package of bacon, um, which is uncured, uh, it's un uncured bacon that uh, we can go through the ingredients, but it's a high quality uh, pork as well. So those are some of the, I think, the key points in evaluating whether Butcher Box is good for you. Um, and hopefully some of these initial things have been helpful for things you weren't aware of in making your decision. But now I'd like to pause and actually open the box just to show you the packaging itself, what I got, and the different types of cuts. So this package was delivered, looking at the clock, um, at 10.45 a.m. It's now 1.15. So a few hours it's been sitting in this box. Now it's been sitting in my house because I actually was outside when the delivery came. But um, I have had the, for example, in February, although the weather was like 38 degrees, this package sat on my front porch for five hours and it still was high quality. Uh, it was still frozen, I mean. So when I open up the box here, um, as I said, the, um, the packaging is very good. So first thing you'll see is that when you open the box, it actually has a ceiling of cardboard in the top. So I'm gonna pull the ceiling up and over. It's actually a, wow, the bottom is actually very cold. Um, it's a thick carton that secures the top layer of it and maintains the, the, the temperature inside the box. When I look inside the box, I still actually have a um, dry ice bag that's half uh, 
half melted, so there's actually plenty of dry ice in there. And it says don't touch without gloves, so <laughs> that was smart. Um, everything is frozen solid. There's an insulation piece. You'll see it's like a piece of foam. So you have the top layer on the very top, followed by a foam layer below, followed by the meats and a bag of dry ice. So after a few hours, it's still very cold. And even if you look inside, the packaging is actually pretty thick. You know, on all the borders, they have this kind of thick, uh, thick wall that maintains, I think, a level of uh, freshness. If I can compare this when I first got it, the very first time I got this, you open up the box, it was sealed in, uh, with a zipper in a uh, kind of insulated black bag that has an insulation interior, and the quality of it wasn't, uh, wasn't as nice. It wasn't as sturdy, it wasn't as, as good. There was one time one piece of meat was a little soft. So ever since then, they've maintained uh, a great delivery, and um, it's always been frozen solid. So those are some initial points there. If I pull out the uh, dry ice, let's just quickly go through the types of meat I have. Um, I'll do it this way. Um, now, as I said, I did, the, I did the custom box, so I actually know what I'm getting, but I'll explain it as I pull it out. First is I got two 10 ounce strip loin steaks. You see this uh, packaging, they come in a, a solid in, in insulated packaging. You just, if you want to cook one of them, you could just cut it down the middle and the other side that you don't use will still be um, airtight and then you could open that when you're ready. You see it's like a brick. So just a quick few points about this. As we said, this is um, grass-fed beef, 100% grass-fed and 100% grass-finished. Uh, no growth hormones, antibiotics, born and raised on pasture. Uh, net ounces is 20 ounces, so this is two 10-ounce steaks. Okay. Next, I have two grass-fed beef flank uh, flat iron steaks. So uh, flank steaks, I love. They are extremely tender and juicy. Um, when you open it up and you unfold it, you know, the cuts you can get out of it are definitely enough to feed three or four people, if two of those people are women. Um, but it's, it's been enough to feed uh, four people on average. Um, these are one of my favorite cuts because, uh, especially in the summertime with grilling, uh, flank steak is great. So we got two of those. Next, I have uh, one grass-fed beef ranch steak. This is a six-ounce piece of uh, ranch steak. Okay. Next, I have two grass-fed filet mignon steaks. Each is uh, approximately six ounces. Round. Love filet mignon, so I got two more. <laughs> so actually I got four filet mignons. And last but not least is the butcher box bacon. This is apple smoked uncured bacon. This is uh, has no sugar. It's not preserved, no nitrates or nitrates added except for naturally occurring nitrates in celery powder. Raised by uh, farmers and committed to sustainable and humane practices. Um, so this is no sugar bacon, as I said, and uh, very good. Uh, definitely the quality of this is better than you know, your average Hormels, for example, that you get in the grocery store. And um, there are 10 pieces in here, decent sized. And that's it. So to wrap up, I have a package of bacon, two flat, uh, flat iron flank steaks, two 10 ounce strip loin steaks, one ranch steak, and four filet mignon steaks for $148, delivered to my front door, frozen solid, um, and grass-fed and grass-finished. So, overall, I love the service. For me, I think it's worth it. I have a family of three, a wife and a five-year-old daughter, so I think it's fair to say, and we do have one child on the way coming in November, which I'm psyched about, uh, a boy, so I have two girls, myself and a baby boy coming. It's fair to say we don't consume a lot of beef or uh, food in general, that's fair to say. But even still with that, with the combination of the quality of the meat, 
um, gaining access to it and the convenience, and also being able to store extra food in an outdoor refrigerator. I couldn't keep storing a lot in my um, freezer here where I have in my, in my kitchen. It's just too much. Those factors combined make me comfortable that I make the right investment with this butcher box and I can stop it and start it at any time. So I would definitely recommend it for those reasons. That pretty much wraps up the video guys. I'll continue to shoot a lot of other videos. If you're not familiar with my channel, I have started a channel in January where I'm showing you a number of elements across many different areas of my life from my finances to business to you know, trying to uh, in increase success in my fitness and my personal well-being and my wealth. Just subscribe to my channel and you'll get notified whenever I post new videos. Uh, lately, I've been doing one to two videos a day. And if not, no big deal. At, at worst, I hope this particular video on ButcherBox helps you in your journey of deciding if that's the right investment for you. Until next time, guys, I wish you well. And uh, it's June, so I wish everyone a great summer. Thanks.